So last week we had a a great discussion about large groups hmm. and what to do and that kind of stuff and the challenges yeah. and everything. And I thought it was that's a good start of a conversation of top five things for people to know before you come wine tasting in Willamette. Um, and and so we it's really a top fifteen because there's so much. Uh, each of us kind of have our own top yeah. five, and we're probably not even hitting everything. I put out a question today on the Facebook to a bunch of my industry friends and got some great answers too. So I think maybe we'll follow up and hopefully start maybe a chain or a, I don't know, of stuff that you should know before you come out. But this will be kind of the That would the be start. perfect for TikTok and Instagram. You can just do little bullet points of what to know. That's there a good go. point. That's a good point. We can do <clears throat> tic- the, the TikTok. There it is. People can sit on the, the pooper mm-hmm. and... Watch us figure out what to do before you come to wine country. Yeah, there you go. Um, Coleman, you're going to kick us off. Sure. One thing is that people come to the valley and they expect to be able to, like, go out, you know, go to the wineries, and then they get done with dinner, and they're like, what's up next? And you're like, something in Portland. Because there's not a lot going on in the valley at late at night. And so, I, like, I like to make clear to people that it's, it's amazing here, and, and there's a lot to do. But the nightlife isn't in the valley; it's in Portland. So, okay. so plan your nights, your late nights in Portland, and plan more like your your wine tasting and all your stuff out here, and then more of like a night in or a late dinner. Maybe. Cabana Club is it? Is it the no. where it's at? There are, and then and, and then. Well, that's a good point, Stefan. And then the other thing is, you can embrace the towny culture, and you can go out with the townies, and that's an experience that tons of people have a really great time at. So, like Lumpies or if First Street exists anymore, I'm not sure. The local bars, <laughs> Cabana Club and <laughs> McMinnville. I mean, but even still there's right now, though, everywhere. like, there's still time restrictions on how late oh, they can true. stay open. True. And then we'll that's see what happens this summer. And, but, yeah. but, yeah, so party late in Portland. Uh, out here, it's not so much a late night scene. Um, also, pick, I think, always trying to pick a few places that are smaller in size rather than... Googling the places that you can buy in your Safeway, local, you know, wherever you live. Uh, find some places that you can't buy where you live because those are really the special places that are special about Oregon. Oregon's a boutique, small, uh, yeah. under 5,000 case place. And so see what that's about. Don't just come to like the big ones, even though you could, you know, go to a few big ones, but that's just a big, that's an important thing. Um, attire's not important really. You can dressed to the nines and looks super nice and it's always awesome when people like hats. dress up and go wine tasting the women hats, wear the hats like, yeah, yeah like like kentucky derby dress yep it happens um Just which mine. is awesome and it's what embraced but people go in like yoga pants or like they just go in like their farming clothes so kind of all types of dress are accepted at the wineries most wineries especially like there's no dress code at any wine. You're not going to get looked about. down at pretty no. much any wine. Even like Domain Serene. Like you could go go in there in Carhartts and a flannel and would be like totally normal. Yeah. It's not so yeah, don't feel bad if you want to get really dressed up because it's awesome and it's really fun. But like also just go out in what you're comfortable in too. Um, plan for unexpected weather. I think it typically like rains when it says it's going to be sunny. Sometimes you have beautiful days when it says it's going to be cloudy. Especially in spring. Spring. Yep, spring I mean, and early summer, is, but June and stuff spring. like yeah, June and, and April, May, June are, are really hard to kind of predict. So, kind of always bring rain clothes um, or something just to be able to put on at least while you're like out tasting. Or some places are breezy; they're on the mountain. Or, yeah, you know, yep. there's you'll be cooler than you think probably most days. So just bring something to like keep warm or keep dry. And then the other thing is that there's Oregon's so diverse in its like taste. Uh, one of the most important things about coming here and tasting it is that within a few miles you have different entirely different microclimates uh, within these two these six different AVAs and more so now th- more AVAs well now. more AVAs are coming uh, Laurel it- Laurel R- Laurel Hood no Laurel Hood <laughs> Laurel Ridge no Laurel Laurel Pumpkin. Wood Laurel Wood Laurel Wood is, it, so there's, Laurel is Wood. there seven Laurel now. Wood. No, there's, well, there's more. more. We, they there's more to coming. The range range too. Yeah, they're here. They've arrived. So okay, so yeah. there's a bunch of AVAs. Okay, sorry, but yeah, no, point. you're good. But six within this sort of area and more. Correct. Right. The six more dominant. have been recently established. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what I'm saying is like try and plan at least two different days or two different tr- uh, tastings at two one uh, two different AVAs, not just like stay in Dundee and go to six different wineries. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
you can taste the flavors of not only the, the winemakers and that brand, but like the soil and the place. Right. And it's a really cool, for me, that that's what makes wine really special and cool. One, one, one of the good parts about having a tour guide or someone who knows the valley intimately, mm -hmm. they can, even if you only have one day, but you want to meet a winemaker or taste across those AVAs, Cody Wright's a guy that comes to mind, you know, who has vineyards in multiple AVAs and does yeah. them all really well. Uh, so you can taste four AVAs right next to each other. Yeah, go to yeah, a vineyard, so it's vineyard a really designated good, that's person. That's a really good point. Yeah. Like and how do you party. find who makes the really good vineyard designated wines around here? If you can't rely on Google, what would you possibly yeah, there you go. do? Right. Call a tour company. Yeah. Or call your, well, like, yeah. And you might find you really like the Dundee Hills. Or you might just love Eola Amity. Right. Well, you, you won't know that unless you really try those wines. Right. right. You know? So then you can focus next time you come or... When you're at a restaurant and on the wine list, oh, that's from Yellow Amity. Yep. Amity, I know yep. I like that. Yep. AVA, whatever. Right. Uh, okay, my list. Um, oh, food. Very few wineries have true menus. Very mm. few, as in like two, three, two, three? Only two come to mind. Yeah, Brooks Watt Valley. Um, oh, three, I guess. Stoller has one. And Stoller now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of places have meat and cheese plates. A lot of places have those, but but so many p times people ask me, oh, we'll have lunch at a vineyard. So no, many won't. times we don't have restaurants <laughs> at the vineyards, no. you know, not, I mean, King Estate, you know, there's just a handful. Um, so plan for food, plan on either having the meat and cheese, a lunch stop or whatever. I think I'll get to that on one of them. Anyway, um, oh no, <laughs> that was on my extra Your list the red list. hills the red hills yeah. anyway. um okay bottle prices we're a little more expensive um we have we make we're like third in the country in terms of fine wine production but we're two or three i can't remember but we have a high bottle price yeah. essentially compared to like new york and virginia and some of these other wine regions so mm -hmm. just you know don't be surprised when your average bottle of pinot is costing fifty dollars, forty five dollars, yeah. something like that. Yeah, you're um, supporting small businesses who are yes, exactly. Like you said, five thousand cases or less. So. Small production, yeah. and uh, and the white wines, like really, I know at like your supermarket and stuff, you can find white wines you like for fifteen, twenty bucks. You are not going to find pretty much in any of the tasting rooms any wine under twenty dollars. Pretty no. much. No. no, there's a lot Even of pride in our white wines, our Chardonnays yeah. in particular. Yep, um, and it's well deserved. Yeah, they're excellent. They are excellent, um, but yeah, you're not going to have just porch pounding. Well, and cheap, with those cheap, too, cheap like I tell my guests all the time, the majority of the high quality Chardonnays in the valley never make it outside of Oregon. Yeah, because we know what we have here. Yeah, they go. They're out to the not clubs. getting into distribution, so um, be prepared for something unique, but it's going to come at a higher price. Yeah. Um, ha, wineries typically do not like large groups. <laughs> okay, <laughs> birthday parties, bachelorette parties. Divorce graduation, parties. divorce parties, um, yeah, I've seen them wedding. All. You know, I'm sure, typically but. wineries do not like to handle those large groups. They will, uh, they will. Men, most of them will take those large groups. COVID is an is exception. That's we talked about that last week. Um, so, go into your bookings with that in mind. You know, these wineries are taking you. At, you know, because they, they want to make you happy and they want to do it kind of as a courtesy and maybe there's somebody in the group who is serious about wine that they want to serve. But typically, the large groups are, they don't buy a lot of wine. They don't tip well. They don't tip well. They can be loud and ruin the experiences of other guests. Yep. So you need to go into your tasting experience as a large group going into these small wineries. Most of them are small. Go in there with that in mind thinking, okay, I need to make sure that I'm welcome back, that I, you know, that I... I'm respecting the winery and I'm respecting the other people that are tasting there. Yeah. And, and I recommend, I recommend always having one, like one person who buys a lot of wine. If you have a big group, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's somebody that wants the wine. And if you just have like a group of 12, that's just a total headache is a wine, you know, winery, or like, a, right. like a tasting room manager. If one person's like, Hey, I'm going to buy two cases at the end, <laughs> just before you even start, and you're like, I know, you know, I know it's a lot of work for you. We're buying some wine at the end. I just want to make sure you those know. Those are great people. Those those people that like over communicate, it's, it's so helpful because right. it's like, thank God, it's be worth it. Because yeah. then you know you're gonna Good sell point. two or three bottles to a couple other people, and you might leave. They might leave with three or four cases sold. And so, 
Right. Being a buyer makes you a much better group, like in, in a big group. What I think uh, makes it worthwhile. Along yeah. with that, I would say if you're bringing a big group, uh, take some extra steps and send maybe info about the winery to everyone in your group. Good point. Give, like, prepare your friends in advance to know that this is like something we're taking seriously. And if you're not, you can always give the winery a courtesy call. Hey, our group, we're casual tasters, or maybe yep. we would like to just do some bottle service. I know yep. half of our table loves white wine, half our table loves red wine. Helps the um, wine, yeah. yeah. As much information as you can give a winery headed into uh, a tasting in a large group scenario, the more prepared they can be, and they can allocate the right staff member to be with your group. Right. Yeah. Um, which ultimately will give you a better experience. Because if I'm going into this, I, I approach every group as potentially very serious wine buyers. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to give them the respect that serious folks deserve. Um, and seven out of 10 times you go to present a wine and everyone at the table is talking, you present it. And as soon as you go to walk away, they're like, Oh, Hey, we didn't hear it at this end of the table. Well, like, yeah, well, kinda, shut the fuck up. Kind of too bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so in that setting, know that you're in a, yeah. in a place. Uh, that we could probably once, do a whole other list I know, on just I large know. group. I could go forever. Etiquette. Just respect the place you're in and give the the hospitality staff a heads up on yeah. the style of hosting you would like for your group. Mm -hmm. Wineries do not want to collect tasting fees. Oh, right. They want to sell wine. Yeah. No. Hey, so. And anyway. I certainly don't want to spend seventy percent of my one table turn babysitting a large group. Absolutely. When I do have other buyers. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Our wineries out here tend to be a little more spread out. Yep. Compared to Napa, you can't really, unless you're in downtown, like Dundee, McMinnville, Newburgh, you cannot really walk to wineries, no. typically. Right. Um, it's dangerous so, if you do. <laughs> right, which brings me to my last point. Uh, maybe you don't Maybe you don't want to walk or you can't walk. Biking is not a great option either. No. Um, As a tour driver, I can't stand biking groups. Yeah, so the, the roads are narrow. <laughs> the, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Put the roads are narrow. They're, they're blind, blind hills. If you're, I don't recommend biking. My one caveat on that is, if you are just there to bike and you love biking, go with a tour opera, a biking tour operator. Um, what's his name? Out of eminent domain. Um, his name. Is, anyway, I'll get it. I'll, we'll, I'll plug we'll it, it in. in. Um, if this, if Asher ever sees this, I'm gonna be in trouble because it's his stepdad. Tours by. I don't know, so something sorry, like that. Asher. Anyway, um, you <laughs> go with the go with the biking so tour we'll link, operator. We'll link them in, yeah, our, yeah. in our description. Go with the biking tour operator because they will have uh, be able to guide you a little bit better, better roads, more um, protocols on how to be safe out there. But just grabbing your bike and going for a ride on these roads is just not especially good in the afternoon because folks have been tasting and now yes. they're driving and with all the blind corners. The it's scariest because if you're in the opposite lane, someone's going to come into my lane going around a blind corner. And there's literally nowhere for any of us to go. So yep. be cognizant of the time. If you That's go biking at 7.30 in the morning until 11, you're good point. You're better yeah, yeah, yeah. than 3 o'clock in the but afternoon. The biking well, and that's so. another thing, going back to my first point. If you're the same thing with biking, Portland, literally 45 minutes away, is one of the like most bike-friendly cities in the world. So that's a great thing to do on a day. They have you bike maybe around. Maybe bike yeah, around, yeah. Eat, at dinner, eat dinner in Portland that night. But like Portland, and then there's amazing... Uh, trails and stuff for bikers out that way, but yeah. just Stefan's right. There's just nothing around here. Like yeah. people think they're gonna come here in this beautiful wine country and bike around, but or just bike a, from winery to winery. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying more oh. specifically the wine bike yeah. tour. Like yeah. the worst. I don't recommend that. So. Plus, you fucking come in and you're tights and it's all sweaty wine tasting. No one likes <laughs> I see him doing it. I said great. I just, I said That's casual. a life choice. No one wants some dude like walking in in his like butt pad. <laughs> Sliding shorts. It's like, hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> I'm here. I biked here. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't care. Like, obviously, yeah. you don't care. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wesley. I'm not being disrespectful, but I put mine on my phone. Yeah. Um, really try to respect the tasting appointments that you have. Um, it's We're all in a mm. tough spot mm -hmm. because, like, with the amount of folks we can have inside and now the increased demand, the majority of us are appointment only. COVID or not, always respect your appointments. Right. So, and the majority of us are appointment only. Um, so try to be on time. If you're not, give a courtesy call. Yeah. Um, also respect closing times. The the staffs. Yep. Um, 
Thank you, Amanda, for that one. We are, yeah, thank you, Amanda. We're going to be gracious hosts, but also we have lives outside of hosting you. So if a winery closes at 5, don't stay till 6.30. Yeah. Like, it's not like if you get there by 5, you can stay as long as you want. That's what people often, for some reason, think. Right. It's not like the restaurant closes at some time, and if you're done with dinner at that time, we'll close out. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, food waits are long. This goes back to your point earlier. Oof. Uh, if we are planning a lunch stop, you almost have to plan, you have to be really good about ordering online and having a pickup, or you have to prepare for a 45 minute wait to get your food, mm -hmm. then 20 to 25 minutes to eat, and then another 15 minutes back to whatever winery you're at. So make sure you plan accordingly. Uh, it's one of the biggest things I see all the time. I get calls 1.30, hey, we're at Red Hills Market, our food still isn't out. What time did you show up? Well, 20 minutes ago. Yeah, how about that? I'm probably not going to be able to hold your table. Right. Um, well, on the, I'm just going to mention Red Hills Market real quick. Yeah. Landmark. Highly recommend it. Oh, 100%. Forget it. Forget walking in there without ordering food ahead on a Friday, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday and getting out of there in an hour or less. Right. right. Forget about it. Don't and do it. And it's not their staff's fault. They just, no. They're so no. exceptional at what they do that they have an incredibly high demand. Well, go there, expect to wait an hour, get a nice like a nice drink and wait and hang out. Yeah. It's a sweet place. Yeah. You have to go if you come to the valley, but you have to expect to not be there like stopping or in between appointments. Market right. is a little bit of a misnomer. Yeah. Right. Totally. You still have to wait in line <laughs> yeah. to buy some of the stuff out of the cold case right. that you could then go take and eat. Right. You still have to wait in it's line. It's not a it's Starbucks. Not, like, even even places yeah. like Trellis are still having long lines too, yeah. and and decent wait times. Mm -hmm. The the hidden gem in the valley right now, the Copitos food truck. Let's go in the Methven parking lot. Yep, mm. get a dank ass burrito. Dude. They have it out to you in fifteen minutes. Yep, you can get a cold <laughs> beer from Methven. Well, that's another oh, little that's secret yep. tip: is go to the food trucks around here instead of yeah. going to the big restaurants right. because you'll get food way faster and a lot in the of the summertime. It's damn good. good. Yeah, it's good food. Um, <clears throat> on the food line, most wineries aren't allowing outside food, mm. so don't think well, I can just swing by, <laughs> pick up food, and take it to my next winery. Yeah. It's probably not going to happen. Not right now. Uh, anyway, right now, some wineries are, but hopefully it For goes back part. to where there's more outside food allowed and but. and if you if you're thinking along those lines make sure you call the winery after your food pickup just to verify that you can because it's awkward yeah. as a staff and it's awkward for you like we don't want to put you on blast being like no you have hot food you can't eat it on property i don't mm. i don't want to tell you no but i have rules that i have to follow too especially hot food uh expect like what stefano was saying about higher bottle prices tasting fees aren't Fifteen dollars in the valley anymore. Very few um, are. You know, very few. I would say the average is twenty-five. I agree. Thirty. Yep. yep. Um, At least. Yep. Some are going to be higher, and there's places that are exceptional that are going to require. If we're talking about J, five hundred bucks down. That's an exception. And then it goes into your wine, wine purchases. purchases, right? Some are requiring a three-bottle minimum purchase. Some are six. If we're talking big table farm. Um, so make sure you do your research before you just. Call six places or four places, get your reservations and show up and be like, I wasn't expecting to pay thirty dollars for this wine tasting. Sure. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, let's see, what was my last one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, just kind of going back to the large group thing. Don't try to surprise a winery by adding an extra <laughs> two or three people to your <laughs> reservation. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us have very specific table sizes and we're booking based on those table sizes. These um, are small wineries. Right. So we have four tops. We have a couple of six tops. Yeah. And if you show up being like, oh, yeah, my best friends decided to show up. We have eight people now. Um, again, it just oh, leaves room. Oh, what did room. they want to schedule an appointment for? <laughs> right. It leaves, right. It leaves room for an uncomfortable interaction that's going to set your tasting off kind of on a bad foot. Mm -hmm. uh, so just be thoughtful. Give a call. Yeah, transparency. Yeah. yeah, we're small. Right. 